My goals are simple. Obtain the best endgame weapons and defeat all of the bosses, all while only relying on melee weapons. This is my progress since last episode. I'm equipped with the rotted fork and a face saber for weapons, as well as a set of Wolfram armor. Is that too much foreshadowing? Remember I said that the Desert Scourge is no pushover for a reason? Well, let's solve that problem today. Yes, yes, I know what you're probably all thinking. How could I even think of fighting a boss without the proper rest? Don't worry everybody, I crafted a bed. <laughs> I keep watching this clip back and I legit just place the bed and walk away. No, but in all actuality, I think I need a bit more max HP before I could try to take on the Christmas Scrooge. I found some glowing mushrooms growing not too far underground and an enchanted boomerang. Again, my previous ruling on trying not to rely too much on projectiles right away still applies. But little did I know, this marble biome that's right outside this door has one of the most iconic upgrades for this account. Did you see that? That's the gladiator's locket. Let me read that for you. Summon two spear of swords to protect you. This is perhaps the most fitting item for this melee only account build. Look at that. I know I only have five accessory slots, but I think it's going to be pretty hard to convince me to switch off of these for a while. Anyway, I make my way down this rail and what the hell is this? Why does it sound like something shooting Star Wars lasers at me? Hi, uh, this is me from the future. This is a uh, Sunken Seas Biolab. I still don't really know what that means, but it sounds pretty fancy. Either way, this building came with two hearts right outside, so I'm not really complaining. And now I have a virtual friend. There's probably a BTuber joke somewhere here, but uh... Stop. Stop examining it. Okay, time to start preparing the arena for the Desert Wormy. Nothing interesting, but I do dip below for a few materials to make the Desert Medallion, which summons Wormo. Grab some potions from home, and I think I'm ready. Here's a quick look at the accessories I took for the fight. Aglet for speed to make avoiding attacks easier, Giant Shell for plus 6 defense and 5% damage reduction, Cloud for double jump, the Gladiator's Locket is pretty much already part of my identity, and Hermes Boots for extra speed. Along with the Wolfram armor, I think I'm ready to go... Oh. Yeah, uh, hmm. Let's add a couple platforms and try again. <clears throat> I think back to the drawing board. First things first, I'll need more HP. I'll be slowly working towards the max HP of 400 before hard mode. What else can I do to increase my odds of defeating the Desert Scourge? There's one more weapon I've been holding out on obtaining. The War Axe. It's a rare drop from skeleton creatures underground. Whenever I land a critical strike with the War Axe, I reduce the defense of the enemy hit by 15 and the damage reduction by 25%. I'm not actually sure how it works on all the separate segments of the Desert Scourge, but I'll go for it anyways. And without too much struggle, I got it. Although not without dying embarrassingly while caving. With my new weapon, I'm back here at the arena. Only to have a goblin army start approaching. I built a third platform which should make the worm come up higher, making it easier both to dodge as well as deal damage. And I swear I won't be distracted at all thinking about the goblin army. Okay, with the goblin army, there's two things I can get. Of course, the Goblin Tinker NPC is awesome since I could combine a few accessories for more powerful ones. The real kicker is this one. I feel so stupid going on a long plan about the War Axe since the War Blade is literally just one attack better. Whatever. Here's a few more houses so I can get the Tinker later. Wait, wait, why are you here? Oh god, I can't catch a break. Eh, uh, now that I'm distracted, a few more odd errands can't hurt garden. Workshop looking pretty good. Here's the finishing touches on an actual bedroom. I have a bad habit of not building a bedroom on any game I play. Oh, you feel an evil presence watching you. Oh yeah? Bring it. I'll bring you all the way to the desert arena. Isn't there a saying or something about overconfidence? You know what? I think the reason why I couldn't defeat either of those bosses so far is because my arena sucks. 
Choose the completed arena that's twice as large. It's time to go, baby. And with that, I won by the skin of my teeth. I make two instant upgrades, Riptide Sword and Urchin Spear. And of course, I celebrate the only way I know how. Round two, baby! It wasn't a fluke! Round three! Yeah! Now that I've calmed down a bit, here's the Victide armor. Plus 13 defense, 5% damage reduction, 5% crit chance, 8% move speed, 5% melee damage, a chance to fire a seashell projectile, and when you're in water, 3 more defense, a bump up of 10% damage reduction, 50% move speed, and 10% melee damage. I'm like one of those old school Orbeez. You put me in water and I'm a god amongst men. I'm also making a shield of the ocean, an accessory which grants me plus 2 defense or plus 7 in water along with 2 regen and 10% moves to you when I'm wearing this armor. I finally feel like I'm bringing a handgun to a knife fight. Look at the damage from this range. Easy. And you know what? I'm feeling so confident, I think I could just take on worm boy number 2, Eater of Worlds. Okay, uh, you know, I feel like I just said something about overconfidence, and no, I didn't just drop 33 gold right there because I forgot to put the money away after defeating the eye. That'd be stupid of me. Find out next time how I recuperate with the loss of being an idiot. And I'll probably be fighting the worm again because it went so well.